So this is Yannick, uh, he's from Germany and he's turned up here in Spain to kind of pop by and we went climbing yesterday, was it yesterday, the day before, anyway. The day before <coughs> yesterday, yeah. Uh, went climbing uh, and yeah, he just showed us this really, really cool van. Um, I hope you enjoy the tour. What I really like about this van is partly the quality of the craftsmanship because this man is a carpenter uh, and also like the general like clean aesthetic with the blue color and the wood which he's been to it, it's really cool. I'm Yannick, I'm 23 years old from Germany. I've just came here to visit and this is my van for transit from 2013. All right, so this is the ladder here. It's attached to the, to the uh, back door. I already bought it like this, so it was already installed. It's pretty convenient if you have work on top, like if the solar is kind of messed up and dirty, you can clean it very easily. So, um, and I also installed like a backup camera here. This is like the last thing I kind of did just to make sure I don't bump into things when I back up. There's like three roof racks on top, on like two of these I installed the solar with, so I don't have to drill any holes into the car except for the cable. So it was really easy to install the solar for me. And yeah, these already came with the car, so didn't have to spend any extra money on it. So here we have the big solar system and the roof fan. We're gonna show you how it works from the inside. Yeah, it can be quite comfortable up here with like, if you just even put like a yoga mat, like a little pillow, it's perfect for summertime. <laughs> this is like a 160 watt solar and it's more than enough for me. I actually never have drained the battery. I mean, now since it's winter, it might happen for some time, but yeah, with this, I'm pretty good hooked up for my system. So this is like kind of the first thing I installed in the car. It's an uh, Dometic S7 window and it um, blacks out the, the whole inside so you can uh, only see inside when you have lights on and it's dark outside. Okay so I have a little extra security system because I didn't really trust the one the van already has so I just put some extra security on all the doors and um, well, what I do is I lock all the doors from the inside we're going to show you that a little later and then this is the door I come out with and I just drilled in a hole through the um, through this thing here, and just put like this uh, this lock on here, and then you can't really open up the door. It's a really easy system. Just drill in a hole, get the lock, and it's just a little extra security. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on on the other doors, like on the front doors, I install like two angles, like on the on the door here and inside of the car and then I just have these matching bolts so if I lock the car and I'm still inside I can put these through here and so they can't really be open anymore I mean I know if you smash in the window you can always get in but it's a little extra security okay I also have like a steering wheel lock so to prevent the van from actually being stolen. So then you can just really easy unlock it, put it on this, lock it again. And I didn't actually bought it specifically for the transit, so I guess you can use it for a whole bunch of other vans too. All right, so this is the kitchen unit. This is like the, my heart piece of the van. I built this while I was still a carpenter. This might be the heaviest object here in the van, but I really wanted a, a solid wood worktop. And like I built, made the, the worktop myself, the doors, the drawers, everything. And it really looks, looks kind of heavy right now, but it's all like on a frame construction. So this is all just very thin plywood and it's just solid wood all around it. For the doors, I use some uh, blackboard paint so that you can write some stuff on there. This is what a friend of mine wrote when I left. And you can write like a little shopping list or something else. The sides are also done in this paint. And yeah, here like the piece that I cut out for the sink. 
I, I um, rounded up like the edges here so it will fit in there as well and then I can still use it as a worktop but other than that here I can I can have my sink I can wash my dishes yeah this is like a standard based uh, tab that you can find a DIY store and there's like a little pump um, underneath in the in the water container which I can switch on and off here so this is like the a real traditional locking system not really used that often in camper vans but I did it anyways and it works pretty good like nothing shaking around or anything and then I can have like two locks like on the top and on the bottom one that go in the framing and it's really really sturdy never never came out all right so this is like the the water system d down below here so this is where the wastewater goes and I can just uh, un undo these ones and then get rid of the wastewater and behind there is the fresh water tank and also a big jar of like drinking water because I'm using this water only to wash dishes or maybe brush my teeth but for the drinking part I have a couple of these ones so I don't drink the water that set so much in plastic I didn't really like that and then I have two cookers like one is um, always connected so I can just take it out, put it on the worktop and then open up the gas bottle and start cooking. And I didn't want to install a fixed one because I wanted to leave the workspace here free if I'm not cooking so I can do anything else up there. And it just goes down there and it's fixed. This is like the, the second one. And uh, yeah, it's just a just a one gas cooker that I had to get to register it as a uh, camper van in Germany. So I had to get this one and install it and do some some twisting around to to get the license for a camper van. <laughs> All right, so this is like a seven kilo standard size gas bottle just for this cooker, and yeah, I fix it with some straps right through the frame of my of my kitchen so it doesn't wobble around while I'm driving. Here we have the drawers. I have four drawers in total. Three are like very big one and the same size and this is just like a small one where I can fit like all my all my little things. All the drawers are made by hand. Here in the second drawer I just have a whole bunch of glasses with all my things for breakfast. This fits like a whole bunch of fresh stuff, bananas potatoes and in the in the last one there's just cooking stuff like pan, pots and pans and they all lock in with like these kind of things here so there's one attached here and one attached to the um, to the outer shelf like to the framing you just push it in and then push a little harder and then it locks in never never came out Re works really well I've got it on all the the drawers so, and this is like a little magnetic board here for my two small knives that I always use. So this is actually olive and um, I just drilled some holes from the, from the back and put some magnets in there. And yeah, so you can put some knives on here or I even like got a small picture with a, another magnet that holds it up. And I just um, glued it on to the, to the um, backboard here. So no screws or anything. And here I have some upper cabinets, they're like three of all the same size. You just pull them up, there's a little light going on <coughs> for the dark. And I have like a whole bunch of spices in there, a little bit of food, some tea on the upper side. I just um, screw these through the, through the beams that I have, have installed up in here, so they are all fixed in, in these planks. At the light there's like a little moving sensor, so it only turns on when I open up the drawer and otherwise it will just uh, turn off and stay off. You can see the locking mechanism that I showed you at the, that is also at the drawers here. So it's this little guy that pops into place with these, these little um, round things and then you just lock them up and it holds it in place so it doesn't really make a sound, it's really stiff, never came out. Really good. Okay, so this is like the little oven thing I use when I want to make some banana bread or some some buns, 
So you might have seen it. It's a really simple system. So you just put this on your gas stove, and then this on top. So this prevents um, that thing to get way too hot. And then you can put all your dough or whatever you want to bake in here, and it's like a little oven. The heat comes out through here and heats up all of, all the inside. It's really really cheap, simple thing, so you don't need to install a whole oven. You can just buy that thing. It's like around 40 bucks, I think. All right, so this is a Fiamma fan. You can use it to get some air in or take the air out. It's really loud, so I'm not using a whole bunch. And you can also lift the whole thing up, and this is what I usually do, just lift this up, um, open up the window, and there's really nice airflow going on now. So if, you, if you're cooking, it's perfect, or during the night. So this is the fridge that I have bought. It's, um, it's an Ocean Tech 50 liter, around 50 liter fridge, and it's more than enough for me. It stores a whole bunch of food. And it's really, really power efficient. That's why I bought it. The same system that I've used on the windows to, to cover it up, I've used for the front part of the car. So I can just detach it like this. And then I can look through the window while I'm driving or I can even walk through here. This is what I always do. And even if I want to lock the car, lock the front doors and get out of this door. Okay, so this is like a drawer that was already in the transit when I bought it. So I just put some dark carpet on there as well as like the same as on the doors. So you can unlock these and then there's a whole bunch of storage in there. Some tents, snake line, like whatever, fire extinguisher, whatever you need on the road. It's really big, really good storage. This is where I usually either hang up my clothes or dry my wetsuits. And on the sides here, there are some magnets also drilled in from the back side. So I can just hang up some keys or what I like a little more is some, some pictures up here. Next to it, there's a, another little cabinet where I store my, just my music box, some headphones, some other stuff. And here you can see how I, um, what I put in all the drawers and all the cupboards so it doesn't make too much sound when I'm driving. So there's a little bit of cork underneath everything. For the ceiling, um, I wanted it to be very light, but also something pretty. So I decided to, to get like very small five millimeters wood planks. <clears throat> and um, I just screwed some, some solid wood on the beams of the car just with a couple of screws and all of these ones go into the into the wood that are installed onto the car and on on the roof here i installed two lights that i can turn on and off with a switch they are also very power efficient and um, giving you a warm feeling here in the van. Since it's a short wheel version of the van, <clears throat> I put in the bed side sideways and the transit actually is um, quite wide. I put the bed up quite high, it's about like 80 centimeters high because I wanted to fit my mountain bike in there. So this was like my fixed point for the height. The bed is about like 130 centimeters wide and like 185 meters long. And then this side, I installed a little cutout table and the, the legs just fold down and I can like, get some seats up. I have like a little seat that you can unfold like a camping chair and then you can sit here and you have even more space to work on. And this just slides in and out very easily. Put up the legs, put it back in. And here I just have my clothes and some boxes. They, they lock in here when I'm driving so they're not moving around. And yeah, this is like my system, how I organize them in here. Yeah, so this is the control panel for the heater. To turn it on, you just press this button and um, it will turn on. The heat is coming out of here. And it's a planar 2D diesel heater. And I actually connected it to the main diesel tank for the van. This is where <clears throat> I stored all my electronics. So I have a 
90 um, amp hours battery for all my electronics that I have in here. So the battery is beneath the front seat and all the components, all the other components are in this part over here. So there are three things um, or three ways to recharge my battery. So one is the 160 watt solar on top. The other thing is the charging booster. So when I'm driving, um, the bug, uh, the battery gets charged and I can hook it up to the um, normal house running system. And since I'm using gas to cook and I have also the heater, I have like some um, gas warning system in here. So there's one on top for like gas that is falling, like filling up from the top and one at the bottom. So the gas that is rising. Here we have some electric outputs, like the standard ones from the house and the 12 volts um, output for my fridge, two USB, USB ports and the light switch for the bed. So here we have a, another 12 volt connector and two USB ports and the other light switch for the door. So for the insulation I used Armaflex. For all the outer walls I used 90 mm Armaflex and all the other parts I put up 6 mm Armaflex. It's um, that kind of Armaflex that is like double sided um, with one side for the insulation and the other side for some with with glue already on it so you just pull off peel off a layer and then you can stick it onto your van since i didn't want it to install a fixed bench or fixed seats in in the living area so that i can still be able to adjust my space in here i just build these two chairs i have another one also in the area that i can just fold together and then i can sit on it put it wherever I want, pull out the table and I'm good and it doesn't take up any space and I can store them wherever I want to. So for the back doors I also installed like a little thing to get a little bit more security into the van. So I keep a bolt here which I can just put through these. And then it locks it up and it's and it is again an extra security for the for the van locking systems. Alright yeah, so this is the back of my van and this is like my whole kitesurf equipment stuff. So I got like my wetsuits in there and if anything is still wet when I'm putting it in there I installed like um, the out the output of my heater in the back there so that it still dries up. Then we have the mountain bike in here and also the, the kiteboard and longboard and yeah this is just a uh, kind of thing a friend made for me so it's really really easy to, to install in here. Just take off the, the front wheel, put it in there and then it's fixed. And over here I have like a bunch of, bunch of small items like bike locks, duct tape and underneath all my climbing equipment. And down here, there's like my, the rest of my drinking water that we have shown you in the front. Because I'm just drinking it out of my glass bottles here and my little shower thing. So this is just a very easy system to unlock it then and pump it a few times. And then you can have a shower. It doesn't get bad when it's still wet, you know. So how long are you off on your trip for? Well, as long as I can sustain it, I guess. Like I just uh, I just left Germany, and on the way I'm gonna figure out like where I'm gonna get to, to get some work to keep on doing this. So it's like an open end. Yeah. So you do me. some sort of carpentry work as you travel. Yeah, right. That's uh, what I'm what I'm hoping yeah. to do. Just and when you live in a van, then when you're working, even it's super cheap save money and then carry on. Yeah, for sure, that's the plan, just to end up in the city or somewhere I wanted to stay, like say this place, mm -hmm. here's a bunch of climbing I can do, mm -hmm. and then I would just try to find a workshop where I can work and sustain my life again. Amazing. Yeah. That's really cool. So, do you know roughly how much it costs to do the like the fit out the and the install? 
like for all the conversions, like maximum four thousand, mm -hmm. like with everything, electronics, all the wood. So, then how long do you think it took you to, to build the van? To, um, to, like the actual work I put in there must have been like around around two two and a half months. Are you happy with the end result? Yeah, for sure. Are you I enjoying love it? van yeah, life? I love it. Hitting the road. Yeah, 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 of course. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to. Thanks for letting us see your van. Um, and you guys, I hope you enjoyed that tour. I hope you enjoyed that content. Um, if you hadn't noticed, we do have an ebook that we sell, uh, and the link is just in the description. Uh, it contains 160 pages crammed full of practical advice, walkthrough information, electronic schematics, and part lists, which will make your job a lot easier for doing a van conversion and it will save you time and money. Also, we've created special videos for the ebook which enable you to see walkthroughs for how to do loads of things in the van conversion. So that's for water systems, for your electrics, for how to do simple woodwork joints that anyone can do. I really believe that anyone, regardless of their experience, can make a half decent van conversion. Thanks for watching, we really appreciate you watching our content and um, we put a lot of effort to make it interesting, informative and find those cool projects to feature on our channel. Consider subscribing, leave a comment and we'll see you next week.